Good morning, it's Christine Crutcher from Create with Christine. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, if you're gonna join me live here in a minute or catch the replay, happy Easter um, and Passover to those celebrating. So hope you get to gather with family and friends today to share a meal together. So today, I actually contemplating what the heck do I call this card that I'm gonna share with you. I am using the In The Moment stamp set. So confession, this stamp set, I think I've had it on my shelf for five months. And I just inked it up for the first time yesterday. It's so awesome. I mean, there's so many coloring options um, with using, I'm gonna use Stampin' Blends today, but you could use watercolor pencils, uh, water coloring uh, with the water painters. Uh, you could use just regular markers from Stampin' Up. And if you have your January to June mini catalog in front of you, I am on page 57 is where the stamp set is. And there's these three cute samples at the top to give you inspiration. And then I'm gonna actually be using the New Horizons uh, designer series paper. And that's another one. I don't think I featured it um, very much the past few months. So I wanted to give that a feature. It's at the bottom of page 43 and these papers are so amazing. So this paper is six by six and I'll show you kind of what I did with it. Um, let me just give one more quick announcement is that the annual catalog 2021-2022 is retiring. Um, in a couple weeks so I just want to give another plug to remind you that if you want anything out of this one you need to go on the website and see what's still available everything is while well supplies last um, through May 2nd 2022 and then May 3rd the new catalog will go live so here's the card we are going to make today it's actually pretty simple overall but I did do fussy cutting um, so that takes a little bit of time. And then, of course, I colored the girl with Stampin' Blend. So that takes a little bit of time. But overall, um, the card will go pretty quick. And I'm using layering circles dies with this. So here's what you get with these dies. You get the regular kind of circle shape and then the coordinating scallop circle shape. So I wanted to point that out. And this is an old one. I don't think it says on here um, how many dies in the set, but I think there's 16 or there's like 15 or 16 in total. Okay, so let me point the camera down and we will jump right in and I'll show you some. I have a couple different tips and I actually screwed up the first time I made this card. So I'll show you that too. So hopefully you don't make the same mistake as I do. Okay, so let's hop right in. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Elaine. Happy Easter. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I won't be here next week, so I wanted to commit to doing a project today, even though it's Easter, and I figured a lot of people might not be able to tune in for various reasons. So here's my card, and again, I'm using In The Moment. Now, I want to show you how I ended up with the dies that I ended up with. So... Let me take them out really quick and try to not make a mess and lose them all on the floor. So I ended up with the two layering circles that are three inch wide and two inches wide. And how I did this was I got my stamp set and the front of all the Stampin' Up! stamp sets at the bottom, if there's a note here that says you know, not 85%, 90%. It's, it's only 85 to 90% of the total shape or image. But if there's no note at the bottom, this means that this stamp, this image is true to size. So you can take your dies, and this is how I ended up picking which ones I used. I just kind of layered it over. And this was like the two inch wide circle from layering circles. And then this one was the one I picked um, for the girl. And I wanted just, I cut off part of her. I wanted the birds and like the wine and part of her dress and part of the table. So I just lined it up 
and that's how I picked the size. So hopefully you are seeing that okay. Let me move over a little bit, there we go. So there's tip number one. I'm gonna share a lot of tips today. So again, let's jump right in. I did, I'm gonna call this paper piecing, which is kind of an old technique, but it's the only thing I could think of calling it that kind of made sense to me. So I'm gonna start and do all the stamping. Um, I did die cut my shapes to just save time because the paper, the, I'm sorry, the fussy cutting and the um, blending, stamp and blends is gonna take some time on the video. So I just have Memento. When you're using stamp and blends, you want the black Memento ink. So this is a two and a half inch basic white and that looks terrible, but it's fine because I did one earlier and cut it out with the die. So moving along, the girl image, the stamp is a little bit bigger. And so I wanna ink it up upside down, okay? So I'm just gonna stamp and then pick up and get my ink on there. I can't believe this is the first time yesterday that I used this stamp set, it's crazy. So I have a three and a half inch piece, but it really doesn't matter. You probably could do three because this is the piece I'm gonna fussy cut after I color it. So let's bring over, I just brought over a piece of white computer paper and I'm just gonna use it because I'm using Stampin' Blends, they bleed through. And I have a whole bunch of Stampin' Blends. So I like to start at the lightest color. So I'm gonna start with Ivory and do her, um, her like arms in Ivory. And I'm gonna try to line these up and the colors I'll go. So I, I double check like the label because some of these colors look very similar to each other. So we're just gonna come down and quickly lay some color along her arms. Stampin' Up! has new blends um, in different like skin tone colors. So you definitely wanna check out everything that's available. And the blends are $9 each. They come in a two pack. Um, I think except for this one, Ivory. I forget now, I probably needed to go look that up and I did not look it up. So that's all set. Let me get that off the camera. And then I'm gonna do pale papaya. I have the light pale papaya and I'm gonna do the hat, that color. I tried to pick some of the colors that were in the paper, in the designer series paper, New Horizons. And of course, Fresh Freesia is kind of like my base color for, or my, uh, my feature, oh, I forget what to say, my, uh, the color I'm featuring the most in this project. So I just did a little accent highlight with the dark. So I colored the whole hat in light pale papaya. And then I came and added a little accent in dark. I'm just not going to blend today. Whoops, I forgot about the sash on her dress. So let me just do that really quick. I like sometimes blending, but sometimes I like just doing a little highlight with my blends. So let's do the crumb cake next. I did the hair crumb cake. I'm a brunette, so I was just doing kind of like this was me. If your hair is a different color, feel free to color the hair, whatever color floats your boat. I probably should add a little bit of gray in here. I'm kind of a brunette with lots of gray these days. So distinguished brunette. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna come and do the dress. So I've got light, fresh freesia. And I'm just gonna lay down the color. Make sure I'm kind of like everywhere. I'm not super worried if I go outside the lines cause I'm gonna fussy cut this in a minute after I get all my coloring done. So again, I'm coloring the entire dress light 
and then I'm just gonna add a few accents with the dark. I'm just gonna make a line. I'm probably gonna chop off some of the dress, but I'm doing it this way. You, I was thinking I probably could also cut it out, but then I thought, well, if it doesn't line up perfectly, oh, and I totally forgot to do my other stamping, so I'll show you that in a minute. I'm supposed to stamp this a second time on the designer series paper, the whole girl image. So, just add a few accents where the artist lines are in the dress. And if it bothers you to see the line, you can blend it out. I'm just not even gonna blend today. And then a little bit of wine in her glass. So I did cherry cobbler. For that like it's red wine let me look I'm using the light cherry cobbler okay hey good morning Kathy happy Easter okay so the girl is all colored I am just gonna put this aside a second and I well let me kind of show you what I have going on here so this paper is six by six so in order to kind of get two from one sheet of paper I ended up cutting my paper three by four and a half. So of course the three is so I can get two from one piece of paper. So I'm gonna stamp on this one. What ends up happening is I cut off a little bit of the sky and I can use this on another project. It actually would be really cute for like waves or ocean or something, or I could use this side for a little like mountain thing um, with a little sentiment on another project. So that's my um what I have going on but these um I guess it's this way I was I was thinking it's it was this way yeah it's this way okay so this is kind of how the paper comes there's like kind of more floral on one side so I kind of liked this side better um but you could make this card the same way right if your more floral is on this side i put my sentiment on this side but if it was vice versa and you had the same this this piece of paper with the floral on this side you could put the sentiment on the other side so i hope that makes sense so let me show you what i did here um i stamped the girl a second time on my piece of designer paper and then i cut it out with that um three inch wide layering circles dies. And then I'm gonna piece it back together. So this way, I have the birds in the table. And then when I fussy cut and piece it back together, you're gonna to see what's gonna happen. So let me, I'll show you. So after you stamp, I then cut it out with the large die. And then this is the piece we're gonna Where's my other piece? Here it is. This is the piece we're gonna layer with the fussy cutting. Okay. Hey, good morning, Robin. Thanks for tuning in. So, sorry, this is gonna take uh, a few minutes. I'm just gonna kinda go quickly and kinda cut on the black line where the image is. And I'll tell you, I did screw up and I'm just going to cut off probably some of her hair. I just gave her a haircut there, but that's okay. I just kind of want to follow the memento black line. And with fussy cutting, you kind of want to move the paper and keep your scissors stationary. And if I screw up and leave a little bit of white border, I can always go back and give a trim after. I want to try to not cut any of the pieces off and sometimes I kind of get a little hung up there. I might need to trim that a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to follow where I colored with the stamp and blend. So I'm cutting off like the table and you can see it actually goes pretty quick once you get used to it, but it takes some technique to kind of master fussy cutting. So practice, um, you know, makes perfect. I'm not super worried about the bottom of the dress because it's going to hang over. 
and I'm kind of lifting and you try to try not to lift too much like stop and start too many times because then it kind of looks kind of ragged so it's smoother if you try to not lift so I know some people they're just not a fan and that's fine everybody has their what they're good at or what they like to do so um but oh this this just with this paper and this stamp set this just screams to be fussy cut out so a couple other ideas about paper piecing and this is one of the examples that's in the catalog with this stamp set um you can like put designer series paper like on her dress so you could stamp the dress and then cut it out in the designer series paper and layer that on so it'd be really cute. Now, in my first example, when I made this card, I got here and I totally forgot to cut out the white space by her shoulder. So you can see my card has the purple um, of the Fresh Freesia card base in the background because I had already layered it to my designer series paper. This was my first attempt. So I'm gonna do it right and try to cut that out really quick um, oh, thank you so much, Kathy. So my tip is to do this is to try to get a hole punch and um, punch out some of the white space. You might be able to do it a few times if you're careful and try to not get too much uh, cut out. But the other thing you could do is come here in here with an X-Acto knife. I'm going to try to use my paper snips, but I'll probably make a bunch of cuts. So I just make a few like gentle cuts and so, sorry, this will probably take another minute. So on the video, so if you're watching the replay, you could fast forward a little bit, but pretty much I just want to get as much of this white out as I can. So either use your paper snips, small snips, um, or an X-Acto knife if you have one. And I have one, but it's old and it really needs to probably be thrown away and I need to go to an art store and buy a new one. I think I've had it since I was in college. So eh, a very long time ago, let's just say. So it's probably 20... 25 to 30 years old. I don't know if I had it in high school or college, honestly, so kind of funny. And it's possible it was also a hand-me-down, so I don't know. Okay, so this is looking not too bad, but you can take your time. I like, I'm trying to go fast um, to save time, but it would be better if I take my time and make this look really nice, so... Um, it is doable with paper snips, but yeah, it might be easier with an exacto knife. <laughs> I mean, of course, I wasn't. I walked by an art supply store yesterday too. I probably could have bought one, but I think it might have been already closed. We went to dinner with friends last night, so it's crazy how much traffic is in town. Um, and when in town, I just mean like Eastern Massachusetts, it's a holiday weekend, they just started school vacation here. Um, and we have the Boston Marathon, of course, on Mon uh, tomorrow, Monday is Patriots Day, a state holiday here, and we have the Boston Marathon. I just couldn't believe how much traffic there. It was nice out yesterday, too. So I guess that was, um, that was part of it, too. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna say there's a little bit of white space, but it's really not gonna bother me anymore. And I'm gonna layer this on here, okay? So I'm just gonna use some liquid glue. Hopefully you're all still with me. This is not, the this project, this is not how, what I was going to do with this set. So what I was going to do, let me tell you, and I'll probably do it in a future video, was, uh, actually do some blending brushes in the background of the circle and then fussy cut it out. But of course, when I started playing around with this paper, I couldn't, I couldn't do that because the paper was so gorgeous. I had to incorporate the paper. So, um, I was thinking like I was, well, 
the best thing I could think of is maybe I'm at like a country club. We have a country club or or a Italian restaurant next to a golf course. And like I was, you know, sitting there with a nice glass of wine on a nice summer day looking out at the course or whatever. Okay, so this didn't quite work out as I planned because my dress is actually cut off a little bit, which I guess is not that big of a problem, but... I probably should have colored a little bit longer there. Um, so tip when you're coloring the dress, let me show you the stamp set kind of quickly. The dress kind of cuts off. So I kind of colored a little bit underneath with the blends. So when I did this one, it worked out fine. Um, but this one, my dress is a little short. So there's a tip so when you recreate this project make sure you color a little bit longer with your dress but you'll see it lays on perfect I still have the birds and I still have some of the desk so I guess this is this is a good um a good live project because um I'm finding out some tips for you and I just lost a piece I need hold on oh, let me grab that okay so let's get these pieces adhered together. I can actually adhere these pieces right down. So um, with the designer paper, I like to go pretty light with my liquid glue. And so we're just gonna lay this down. And then I'm gonna piece that piece in the middle I'm wondering if I could cover it up. I might, I could. So I just want to line up like the table, the edges of the table, the mountains, or like meadow in the background. I was thinking I could like put the sentiment down there to kind of sort of cover my mistake, or I could kind of like go like there so it's a little bit um harder to see and the other thing is, is i took some fresh freesia open weave ribbon and i'm just gonna put a little touch of ribbon behind my circle so let me grab let me um let me grab a glue dot like in the middle of this thing i'm gonna do like kind of like a cancer awareness ribbon just kind of sort of um, I didn't put the glue dot in the right spot, but that's okay. I can just give this a trim. It was like a five inch piece of ribbon. And I just want to have a little bit of accent coming out. So I'm going to have to hide my glue dots anyway. So I'm going to put another glue dot and I'll have it kind of sort of come out a little bit. And then I'm going to put a ton of dimensionals on the back of this piece, the white. So all in all, it's a pretty quick card. Obviously, you have to do a little bit of die cutting and some coloring and some fussy cutting, but it does go together pretty quick, if I do say so myself. So let's see. My other announcements, I am going to be out of the office uh, starting this Wednesday, April 20th through Tuesday the 26th. So if you need anything from me or if you see some of my posts going up on Facebook, just know that I might be um, a little bit later to reply. So, and then you can cut these at, a t you know, cut these on an angle. I did also throw on some of the ink color. Um, I threw on one, but you could do more than that. Um, these, are, uh, these are retiring, the ink color jewels. So you could go a little crazy and add a whole bunch um, because they're going to be retired. So I'll just add like three. So there we go. So there's my card. So here was the original sample. And in the original sample, you can see how I screwed up and you see the purple card base in the background. And then in this one, of course, I fixed that mistake. But then, of course, there's a little bit of the dress showing. So, you know what? All in all, I think it came out 
awesome and I love the fresh freesia. But I thought I would also, let me see what I have on my notes here. Um, I am out of the office, but I am going to have some posts up at my Facebook page and my Facebook group at Create with Christine. So make sure to check those out. Um, my abstract beauty home decor class, the registration is still open. So here's the 8x8 home decor. And if you want to register, registration uh, registration is going to close this Tuesday, April 19th at noon Eastern. So definitely, if you're not on my mailing list, you want to make sure you click the link below to get all the details for signing up for this class. The, the final call is going to go out tomorrow. And then I did want to just mention, I did mention it before, but my In Color Club for 2022 and my paper shares the details are going to go out when I return just because you know I haven't gone away for a week and uh it was a year uh I mean I'm sorry three years we discovered it was May of 2019 the last time we went away for a week and there's a lot of preparations when you're going away for a week so um uh, my, my last week or two has been kind of crazy trying to figure out what we're doing and all the logistical things about going away. And of course, um, we're monitoring the, the pandemic and all the, you know, cases rising. So I did want to give you a real quick sneak peek of the new in colors because I just put them on my shelf this morning. I have not had a chance to play with them yet, but Orchid Oasis. Parakeet Party. So these are going to be 2022 to 2024. So they'll be good for two years. Starry Sky. Hopefully you can see me okay. So I can't wait to play with these and give you, show you some examples. Uh, Sweet Sorbet. And then of course the final one, Tahitian Tide. So I'm really excited about these new ink colors. I have cardstock. I've got markers. Um, we weren't able to pre-order everything in the new ink colors, but we were able to get a certain selection of products. So I'm excited to start playing and with some of my new stuff, but it probably at this point realistically won't be till I get back. So let's point the camera back up. Yeah, I have a couple commitments to finish up before I go. So I have some swaps. So I might play, uh, with my swaps, obviously, uh, with the new colors, but I won't be sharing because that's the swap and I won't be able to share the swap until everybody gets their swaps. So thanks so much for tuning in. I just want to say also thank you to everybody watching um, that tunes in that you might think, ah, I, I don't really matter and you do matter. So thank you so much uh, and have a great week.